Audio test. Microphone testing.
Then I ask the congregation to stand, please. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. It is Job who says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is Pastor Martin and Leon Bins here? Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that you renew to us new every single day. Father, we recognize that even in the midst of human mourning and sorrow, you are still God and you deserve all the praise and the adoration that we can bring. And so today, Lord, regardless of the situation before us, it is our intentions to praise you with every breath that we take. We thank you for those who are here at this time. We do pray that those who are traveling on their way, that they would get here safely another time that they too can pay their last respect to the deceased. Father, we pray that everything on this program will be done decently and in order so that when all is said and done, you would get the glory and the honor that only you and you alone so rightfully deserve. Bless the proceedings, we pray in Jesus' name and God's people say, Amen. Amen. While the congregation remain standing, we will sing the opening hymn. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Thou hast told me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and I've shed. It is 
is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin, all the bliss of the glorious star, my sin, not in part, but the whole is
um, let me say this. Once you step through the gate down there, you have entered a no smoking facility. No liquor drinking facility. It is not my intention to tell you that you can't smoke or you can't drink. My intention is simply to say to you, you can't do it on the church property. You can always do it down the bottom there. Lorna is somebody that I knew very well as a child growing up in Granville. And um, we want to send her off well. We really want to do that today. And so here's what we're going to do. We want to do this thing decently and in order. If your name is listed on the program, do not, let me stress that, do not wait for me to come up and to introduce all the items. All that is going to do is waste our time. So I want you to look at the program where your name is and come and execute your responsibility. There's one adjustment to the program, and that is where the remembrance is. We want to take out the remembrance, and we want to insert an item from the Protestant Reform Church. Let me state that again. Where the remembrance is, that's going to be an item from the Protestant Reform Church. I don't have any other adjustments to be made and so the next time you're going to hear my voice is when we're going to be doing the offertory hymn so the lectern is right here for your convenience and so um tevan well no sorry yannick i was looking at the tribute so yannick please come with psalm 90 and we will take it from there thank you Good evening, church. My name is Yanni Vins, and I'll be reading the first lesson. Psalm 90, verse 1 to 12. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, in the evening it is cut down and wither it. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength, there are fourscore years, yet it is strength and labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Here ended a portion of God's word. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend. That's all right. That's all right. Who are the thought that I love? Rescue the soul of man. Oh, you rescue the soul of man. You are the one that 
afternoon, everyone. The second lesson will be taken from 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verses 50 through the end. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall, raise, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that this that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as see not that our, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here in that portion of God's holy word. We'll have the from the church now. You don't know, no Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord? No, sir. Lauren, I was a more lively person than this. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. This song was requested by her brother, Brother Bates. I just want to say con condolence to the family another time. And may God give you the strength to go on. I hear the voice of a mighty rushing wind. And it's getting closer than it ever be. I can hear the trumpet. As Gabriel sound the call. But at the midnight cry, we'll be going home. I look around me, I see prophecy fulfilling at the signs of the time. It's a period. I can almost hear the fire. But at the midnight cry, the saints of God shall rise. When Jesus steps I 
I see prophecies fulfilling, hallelujah, and the signs of the time, it's a period everywhere, hallelujah, I can hear the Bible. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Are we ready for that midnight cry? The saints of God shall Hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm Lorna's husband, Richard. Um, there's much I could say about my beautiful wife, Lorna, although there are some people here who will remember her as Lorna Bins rather than Lorna Jackson. I will not say too much about her times in Granville, as most of you will be familiar with it, except to mention how often Lorna told me what a wonderful childhood she had and how she loved her school days. She was incredibly fond of Granville. It was her home and her heart never left it. In 2001, Lorna left Jamaica and moved to England in an effort to improve her circumstances and to be better able to provide for her family back home. When Lorna arrived in England, she made a home in Brixton and found work as a sales assistant and as a caterer. She remained in constant contact with her family and friends in Jamaica, initially by using phone cards and letters, but the advent of modern technology such as WhatsApp was a real godsend to her as she was able to talk to and see the people she loved whenever she wanted to. This made her so much happier because she loved her family and friends so much and it put her mind at ease that she was able to see everybody that mattered to her was all right. She loved to travel the country and in 2002 I met her when she took a trip to Bath she was wandering lost about the town and asked for directions. We got talking and walked all over town that night. Lorna was a strikingly attractive woman. 
And when we exchanged numbers and she went back to London, I did not expect to see or hear from her again. But she rang me and we started meeting regularly either in London or in Bath. She then moved in with me permanently into a flat in Bath and she was happy. It was a beautiful city to live in and she soon found work as a production assistant in a laundry. It was a job she loved and she was very popular with her workmates. She jumped to any opportunity for overtime and she earned a decent living. We got married at Bath Registry Office on July the 10th, 2004. It was without doubt the happiest day of my life. And Lorna said it was also the happiest of hers. It is a day I cannot forget. The memory is as fresh now as it was 18 years ago and will remain so until the day I die. She looked stunningly beautiful in her wedding dress and she was radiant. That day she could not stop smiling. And I knew this was the woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Tragically for us, when we went to the home office to get her indefinite leave to remain, they said we had the incorrect papers and she would have to return to Jamaica and reapply from there. We were both heartbroken and until six weeks ago, this was undoubtedly the most distressing period of my life. It took 18 months and costed many thousands of pounds to get her back, but it was the best money I ever spent. She was worth every penny and all the heartache. I just could not live without her and would have done anything to get her back. Only our wedding day could compare to the happiness I felt when she returned. It was not only me who was overjoyed to see her back. The laundry re-employed her immediately and everyone was so happy to see her. However, Lorna was not somebody to sit on her laurels and she ever looked to improve herself. She got a new job as a healthcare assistant at the hospital and was moving up the band grades the hospital wanted to train her to be a registered nurse. In 2009, Lorna became a British citizen. She was so happy and I was so proud of her. Lorna always loved Brixton and wanted to move back there and we did so later in 2009. This meant that she never had the opportunity to become a nurse, but she was happy and worked as a domestic assistant since her return to Brixton. And I know our colleagues held her in very high esteem. She loved that she could find a little piece of Jamaica in Brixton and she didn't want to be anywhere else. She was a very popular member of the community and had many, many friends. She will be missed terribly. My beautiful wife was also a beautiful mother, grandmother, aunt, sister, daughter and friend. She loved us all with all her heart. But above all, she loved her God and in his hands, she is now safe and at peace. It is fitting that Lorna is laid to rest in Granville, for she was as Jamaican on the day she died as she was on the day I met her, and her heart was always here. She never changed. She could not change. She was the truest person I have ever known, completely incorruptible. I do not know what I would do without her. We both kept our marriage vows absolutely, and only death could ever separate us. I just didn't expect it to be so soon. However, as long as I and others have a piece of Lorna, sorry, it, as long as I and others live, a piece of Lorna also lives, as we will never forget her. I've never known anyone who appreciated life so much and knew every day was a gift. In her prayers every single night, she thanked God for the gift of life. Lorna was not afraid of growing old and welcomed gray hair and wrinkles as a sign of a life well lived but it was not to be for her. We will never remember Lorna as somebody who was frail, fragile, and dependent on others, but rather as a magnificent woman she was in full bloom. I would give everything I've ever had or ever will have to spend more, one more day with her, to have one more chance to smile at her, hug her, kiss her, and tell her how much I love her. My one consolation is I know she knows I loved her with all my heart, and I know she loved me too. Every day I spent with her in the last 20 years has been an absolute honor and privilege, and I will be grateful until my dying day. So God bless you all, and God bless my beautiful wife, Lorna Jackson. May he ever protect her.
Or we're gonna start it at the same time. Do you want you start it? Let me just see. Let's start it. Word. Good afternoon, my name is Tajay, and I'll be doing an item for my Grand Outlander address. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves I be and I was but lost, but
my God, my Savior, me and my God love unending love, amazing Good afternoon. I'm here to share my talent with visitors and family. I'm going to do uh, Oh What a Sunrise. I'm going to try to do Oh What a Sunrise. <laughs> God. This flesh 
that we were corruption it must be but saving also is our responsibility there's no Jodian Maxwell and I'll be reading this poem from Larner's Best Friend. A poem for my friend, a truly beautiful soul, so kind and so loyal, you will live on, my special friend, in my heart and in my mind. Our friendship was truly priceless, I will cherish it forevermore, until the day that we meet again, when I knock on heaven's door. I wish I had one more chance to see that tender smile, to laugh with you again, my friend, just for a little while. Rest softly, my special friend, safe in the knowledge that I will never let your memory fade, and so you will never truly die. <laughs>
Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not, cause the dreams bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Close to the ones here today. Close to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the dreams bring back all the memories, and the memories bring back, memories bring back you. There's a time that I remember when I did not know no pain. When I believed in forever and everything would stay the same. Now my heart feel like December. December. Can somebody say your name. Hey, hey. Cause I can't reach out to call you. But I know I will one day. Yeah. Everybody hurts sometimes. Everybody, Everybody hurts someday. Yeah. But everything will be alright. Go raise your voice and say, hey. Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not. Cause the dreams we got comes memories of everything we've been through. We've been close to the ones here today. Close to the ones that we lost so much. The dreams we got memories of, and the memories bring back, memories bring back you. Memories bring back, memories bring back you. It's just time that I remember when I never felt so lost. When I felt that all the hatred was too powerful to stop. Now my heart feels like a leper and it's lighting up the dark. I'll carry these torches for you, that you know I'll never stop. Yeah. Everybody hurts sometimes. Everybody hurts someday. Hey, hey. But everything will be alright. Go and raise your voice and say, hey. Here's to the ones that we got. To the ones. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not. Cause the dream of memories of everything we've been through. We've been lost to the ones here today. Lost to the ones that we lost on the way. Cause the dream bring back all the memories that and the memories bring back memories bring back you. <laughs> Our offertory hymn is a wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful savior to me. He hideth my soul in a cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. We're going to ask the congregation to remain seated. And once the offering has been collected and the ushers are at the altar, then we're going to ask you to stand for the offertory prayer. A wonderful Savior is Jesus. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He had my soul in Left of the road, where rivers of pleasure I see. 
Standing for the officer, we're gonna ask Brother Henry. Oh, Brother Burke will do the part. That's right. Father, we thank you for this offering. We thank you, oh God, that you've given us jobs, that you've given us opportunities to give back unto you, eternal Father. We thank you for those who had to give today. We pray, oh Father, that you may bless them, eternal Father. And those that have it, pray, oh God, that on another occasion you may provide for them, oh God, that's in the habit to give back unto you. We pray that this offering may be used for the furtherance of your ministry, eternal Father, as we continue to minister in this community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lady Caesar. And so just before we We hear from God through the sermon. We're going to be having the eulogy by O'Neill. And then the selection that you see there 
will be from Pit 4 Gospel Chapel Church, this church. And then I'll come back and share a word with you. So, O'Neill. In her presence and not be indulged in some good laughter. Come in, viewers and subs. That was our beloved Lorna's greeting on Sunday video calls in the family WhatsApp group. And then all the usual drama would begin. Lorna, yes, we never called her aunt or auntie, and she never had any issues with that. She was extremely amusing and would have us rocking in laughter every Sunday. The lady was a queen of nicknames. She would ask, Una see the one poor cat? And we would ask, A who name so? Not the one, I no longer have her protection or security, so I won't tell you who that is, but I'm sure that person is sitting amongst us. <laughs> one has to be very careful around her as one slip of your tongue, and you could be tagged with a nickname that would somehow stick with everyone. She had a nickname for every family member. Jawbone, turkey neck. Rallis Big Goat, Baggy Rice, Manager, Monkey Fruit, Turkey Back, and the list could go on. She lacked mercy when it came to name calling. She even called her own husband, Casper the Friendly Ghost. And we had grown accustomed to her shouting wise on the video calls, Casper, bring so and so for me. The only two persons spared the wrath of her hilarious name calling were her daughter Patrice and her grandson Shaquille. Lorna was a fashionista with her statement jewelry and blonde hairstyle accompanied with very bright colors in her choice of clothing. Overall, she was a very loving person and would regularly call to ensure that we are all doing well. The last Wednesday before her passing, she called to do her usual and she asked, Terry, you cook your husband dinner ready? Terry confirmed. And she replied, then every day you cook. And Terry confirmed. And her usual humor, she replied, no, my love, after me no fire chief. <laughs> she was taken away from us suddenly on July 17, 2022. But until then, our hearts will go on singing. Until then, with joy, we'll carry on. 
Lorna is survived by her husband, Richard, her daughter, Patrice, her grandson, Shaquille, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. May her soul rest in peace. One, two, try. Condolences to the Reef family on behalf of Pitfall Gospel Chapel. Death is never something that we accept easily. Matters not how it comes. But I want to talk to those who are here and you're alive. And we have two sets inside here. It's either you're saved or you're unsaved. And if you're saved, then we have, we have experienced God's goodness. We have experienced God's grace. We are indeed experiencing God's goodness and his grace. And the thing about it, even if you're unsaved, you're still experiencing his grace and his mercies. But don't take it for granted because the aim is for all of us to experience salvation. And God came. And God sent his son so that we can experience that salvation. And you're here so that on a day like this, if it is your time, we can all say her soul is indeed resting or your soul or his soul is indeed resting in peace. But as we reflect, we're alive now. Let's look, let's think about his goodness. Let's think about his grace. Let's think about his mercy. Let's sing about his grace and his mercy because that is what's keeping many of us right now. We're here alive because of his grace and his mercy. Whether you like it, yes or no, you are here because of his grace and his mercy. So as I do this song, as we do this song, I hope that you may reflect on God's grace, God's mercy. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I leave my head I will see the goodness of God all my life It's running out, it's running out. 
Mr. Jackson, as well as to Patrice and other members of the bereaved family, to the members of this congregation and other ministers who might be in the congregation, and to, to all of us, greetings. One of the things that we've tried very hard, we've not always successful. But here at Pitfall Gospel Chapel, we try to put the goodness of God in the forefront of our minds. Because lest we forget that we're here because of our skillfulness, we're here because of anything else. Lest we forget, we want to keep the goodness of God in the forefront of our minds. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, then I'd like somebody to tell me where would we be today. You know, I, <clears throat> I might sound like a scratch record for those of you who have come to funerals here over and over again. I don't like funerals. And even though it might seem ironic to you having done so many funerals here, I don't like funerals. But I do it. As a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I, I do it. Because we're required to do it and to reach out to people who are hurting. But if I, if I have to do funerals, then it is funerals like these that I enjoy doing. You know, to hear 
to hear that at some point in the life of the deceased that they had make, made it right with God is comforting. To listen to eulogies like what we've heard today and to know that the truth was spoken is great. Lana get trouble. Every, Lana, man, let me tell you something. You see all them names that only spoke about, trust me. You can't pass Lana, you know, find some name for you. Uh, and, and trust me. But we, we give God thanks for her. Because if our theology is correct, then right now she's in the arms of sweet deliverance. And if that is the case, then it should be well with our souls. Amen? So I want you to allow me a couple of minutes. Of course, again, if you know me, you know that I'm not going to be preaching because the message has already been shared through songs and other comments that have been made. But allow me perhaps about five minutes just kind of draw your attention to certain things and to ask a question that I'd like you to carry with you when you go. And here's a question. On the day that you die, where will you go? On the day that you die, where will you go? Now, you might be asking, why am I asking that question? Who is going to know now what's going to happen when you die? I'll tell you something. The Bible gives us the answers. So there's no uncertainty about our destiny when we die. So we look at uh, St. Luke chapter 16, and there's a story that Christ shared, a parable from verse 19 through to verse 31, and it talks about the rich man and Lazarus. The Bible tells us that there was a rich man and then there was a poor man. It doesn't tell us the name of the rich man, but it was careful to tell us the name of, of the poor man. And the Bible tells us that the rich man in his life, he, he lived it up, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you go to a church, and the preacher want to give you the impression that it's sinful to be rich. That's not a man of God. But if you trust in your riches, you're not a person of God either. God has blessed us. And the blessings that he has bestowed on our lives are supposed to be used to honor him from day to day. So here is this rich man living it up. And of course, in the midst of life, you're going to have some who are rich and you have some who are I just saw it go. So Lazarus would look for something to eat after the rich man had pleasured himself in his food. But we're not here to compare their living condition. It's, the story is not about you being rich or you being poor. The story is not about you having and someone else don't have. The story tells us at some point in life and the Bible is, is careful to tell us that both men died. So whether you're rich or you're poor at some point each and every one of us are going to experience what the Bible calls death. For there is an appointment with this dreadful thing that each and every one of us must face. But I'm here to remind you that after death, there is still life. Somebody hear me? So don't think for a minute that when you cease to exist physically that you have ended your journey with God. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not Bible because the Bible tells me that after death comes the, the judgment. But I want you to bear carefully what the Bible says. When, when Lazarus died, the Bible tells us in St. Luke chapter 16 that Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom. And it also told us that when the rich man died, he was what? He was buried. I wonder if somebody has seen the distinction. The one person was carried into a place of comfort. 
and the other person was buried, which suggests to me that he ended up in a place that didn't have any quiet rest, a place that was not near to the heart of God. So I am asking you today, this is not about Lana anymore. This is about us who are in the land of the living because guess what? Our appointment with death is coming. And if your man asked me some years ago, he said, Kessler, how you do so much funeral? You're going all over Jamaica and do funeral and 90% of those that you bury, you don't even know them. How do you do it? I, I said to them, I said to my nephew, when I go to funerals, I don't preach or talk about the person who has died. I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Lana's time has already expired, but our expiration date is yet to come. So while we are alive, we have to make sure we make it right with God. So where will you be? Or where will you go? On the day that you breathe your last. Let me help you to understand, my friends. Your, your destiny is not determined by your money. Your destiny is not determined by your social status. Your destiny is not determined by anything that you can accumulate in this life. Your destiny will be determined by the decision you make in relation to Jesus Christ. For it is Jesus who says, I am the way. I am the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father but by me. My friends, don't let people fool you. There are not 10 15, 20 ways to God. There's only one way and Jesus told us he is the way. Don't let him fool you. And as Kidley or Michael Smith has done in his song, he added a new verse to the song. I don't even know if you realize it. But the words of the new verse are precious. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Because guess what? There is no repentance in the grave. If you're going to make it into Abraham's bosom, you have to make it right with God while you have breath in your body. Don't wait, friends. You know, just like Lana, just like my mother, I was just talking to somebody today. And the person wanted to visit Sylvie for, for a long time. The person was overseas and was getting ready to come down and, and she called me. And she said, how mama doing? And at the time when she called, mama had just died for an hour. She could not believe it. There were no signs for us. Excuse me, that mama was getting ready to leave us. There were no evidences. She has struggled with diabetes and hypertension for years. And at the end of the day, it wasn't any of those that took her. My friends, no matter how skillful we are, when death come calling, sometimes it gives no advance notice. And so while we have the energy and while we have God's breath to breathe, I want to challenge you. Make sure that when you breathe your last, you end up in Abraham's bosom. Because if you end up other place, the Bible tells me that you are going to be in torment. There is only one way to God. And Jesus told us, he is the way. If you want to go to God, then John 3, 16 tells us. It's very simple. 
It's about belief. For God so loved the world, the world of humanity, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in this son whose name is Jesus, shall not perish. That person will experience physical death, but that's not the end. Shall not perish, but they will have everlasting life. That's God's offer to you. Now, my friends, is the appointed time. Tomorrow, very well, might be too late. Father, thank you that your word has gone forth and your people have heard. Your word says, he who has an ear, let him hear. And so God, I pray that today, those who have come under the sound of these microphones and any other medium that promotes your word, someone would have heard the invitation to come unto me all in labor and are heavy laden so that you, O oh God, can give them rest. Bless your people. We thank you so much that in this life, Lana surrendered to Christ. And so God, we are, we are confident that she's in a place of quiet rest. She's in Abraham's bosom. I pray that someone today will make it right with you before it is too late. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friends, I want to thank you so much for your patience and your understanding. We are almost finished. Something happened at my mother's funeral last week that I don't want to happen today. When the minister was called to pray, the vast majority of the people walked out of the church. Please, please, me beg you, Show some respect even to the dead. Is Pastor Martin here? Come on, my brother. He's going to be praying for the bereaved family at this time. And once again, I'm asking you, show the man of God, show the bereaved family some respect. Thank you. Can the family please stand? Hallelujah. Before I pray, I just have a, one quick scripture. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. The man and the pale ass name is death and hell follow. And he was given power in the four corner of the hurt. To kill with the sword, with anger, with death. So we are in the time of death. And as a pastor, I will preach. Make sure that your heart is right with God. Because we are in the signs of the time, the last days. Shall we bless the Lord? Heavenly Father, we come to you because you are God. The comforter, Lord, the one who gives us the strength. Father, we are standing before your presence now, Lord, because you have brought us here. And so, God, we ask that, Lord, those who are down and howled and feel like giving up, we ask, Lord, that you will be in the midst of them now. Father, Lord Jesus, you said before you leave this earth, when I go, I will send the comforter. Father, we ask that you send the comforter now to comfort your heart. Lord, I know it's not easy to lose a loved one. But Lord, I pray that you will give them the strength to go on. 
And Father, we pray that you will never leave them nor forsake them, Lord. You promise, Lord, that you will never leave nor forsake us. Father, you've said in your word that your hand is ever straight forth. Lord, stretch your hands before them now, Lord. Lead them to the paths of righteousness. Let them know that without you, they are a total failure. Without you, Lord, they cannot make it. So we ask, Lord, that you comfort them now. Reign, King Jesus, in their life right now, Father. Lord, I know it's not easy for the husband to lose or his partner. But Lord, I ask you to give him strength. The daughter, Lord God, I ask for strength. The brother, the sisters, Lord, I ask for strength. Lord, 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 we ask you to leave them not comfortless. Wrap your arms around them, Lord, and guide them. Lord, I pray that you will never leave them. Don't leave them, Lord. Spread your love upon them, Lord Jesus. And Father, we ask for those who have not surrendered yet to you, Lord. Touch their heart. Touch their heart now, Lord, that they will surrender. The songwriter say, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. Lord, we ask for your love right now. Cover them. Those who are friends have come to comfort them, Lord. Those who are here, Lord, to lift up their arms. Those who are here, Lord, to make sure, Lord, God, everything is done. We thank you. We thank you for the friends, the close friends, the families. Lord, everyone that are here, Lord, to help them go through this time. We thank you. So, Father, we ask that you reign in their life now while we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We're not done yet. And once again, once again, I really want to say thank you for just how well you have conducted yourselves here's what we're going to do now we're going to be doing the recession so i'm going to call in i'm going to be calling on the paul bearers as well as the persons from the funeral home to come and set the casket the way it should be set i am going to start singing the recessional hymn once i finish singing the first verse that's when I want us to begin to take the casket from the church to the hearse. I'm going to ask the congregation to allow us to at least reach the gate before everybody starts to come out because we do not want the crowd <clears throat> at the gate as we take out the casket. So once again, we're going to do this orderly and we're going to do this decently. So Paul Bears, where are you? Let me get all the Paul Bears right now to come. And we're going to sing, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. As soon as I finish singing this verse and begin the chorus, we will begin to make our exit. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. Sing with me, church. Stand back. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy pass throughout the universe display. Sing with me now. Sing with me.
Oh, my God.